Chatty Bays, it's wrap up time. Here are all the books that I read in May. No, I lied, April. <laughs> Middle of the night filming, y'all. This is amazing. This is incredible. Hold on before we begin. Hello. You hear that? The sound of happiness. Oh my gosh, I just realized I didn't even say howdy. Hello, my shoddy bays. Hello, my besties. <laughs> we are here to talk about all the books that I read in April. Non-spoiler, I am just going to be telling you a little bit about each book, what I thought about it, what I rated it, whether I read a audiobook form, Kindle form, paperback. You know the drill. You are here every month. And if you're not, welcome. Welcome to the chaos. I'm Larry, chaos leader. Sometimes I'll start a sentence. And I don't even know where it's going. I just hope I find it along the way. I'm gonna start this video with the books that I read for my reading thrillers for a week. I read all of these um, for that video and I told you in-depth thoughts and you guys went through it with me, non-spoiler. So if you guys wanna go see any more about these books, those are on there. Let's talk about Frida McFadden, y'all. She is one of my new favorite authors. I'm obsessed with everything she does. She's a queen to me. If you have any hate to, towards Frida McFadden, not here. I read these books by her this month and I'm very excited to continue binging so if you have any other books by her that you're like oh larry you need to get on this right now do tell i'm listening bitch basically she is a thriller writer but what i like the most about her is that first of all pretty sure all of her books are on kindle unlimited so if you don't want to paperback read it I didn't. I'm pretty sure I read most of these on Kindle. I just own the paperback because I have issues. That's a discussion for another day. Also, her writing is so fast paced. Like you open the book and it starts right away. There's no background. There's no, oh, let's let's discuss this before we begin. She just throws you right in. And the twist always fucking get me. Some twists get me more than the others. The others. <laughs> Some twists get me more than the others, but regardless, she has bamboozled me in every single book. And I love to be bamboozled. So first up, we have The Housemaid. This is one of my favorites by her. I think this is the one that really just kickstarted me with Frida McFadden, and I have not looked back ever since. This one follows this woman, and basically she goes to work at this house, and she's gonna live there as well. So she goes to work as the nanny, as the housekeeper. She kind of does it all for this family. And there's the wife, the husband, and the daughter. And she starts noticing some weird things with the wife. And she's like, what's going on here, you know? And just as she's trying to find stuff out about this family, this house, this woman, she notices that her door locks from the outside. It may be too late. Dun, 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 dun. I loved this fucking book. I loved it. it. It was like one of those that I really thought... I had it and I didn't. And I rated this one 4.5. I think this is just one of my favorites. It was so good, so fast. Once you figure out what's going on, you'll literally have fucking chills. The Housemaid, highly, highly recommend 4.5 stars. Then the second one is The Housemaid's Secret. So this one, you follow another kind of the same, same vibe where you have someone cleaning someone's house. And I don't want to tell you too much about the characters and stuff because I don't want to spoil anything that happened in the first book. But basically, same thing. You start to notice something's going on with this family and the wife is locked in this room and she just doesn't come out. And the woman working for them is like, why doesn't the wife ever come out? What's going on? I only ever see her when she's like sobbing and she's locked in this room. So her husband's doing something to her and I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to get to the bottom of it. I'm going to save this woman. That's kind of what the plot is of this one. Again, don't want to tell you too much because I don't want to spoil anything that happens in this book. And although I wouldn't say they are like you have to read this one first to read this one, but the characters do kind of intertwine. So I would, if I were you, Housemaid, The Housemaid Secret. I will say I liked this one more, but the plot of this one was better. Like this, the twist just fucking shook me to my core, but I think I was kind of ready when I went into the second one. So I didn't get as shocked, but the plot was so, so fucking good. I was eating that shit up. And I rated Housemaid Secret four stars. So 4.5 for the first one, four for the second one. Then I've got The Inmate and Never Lie. These were the last two I read by Freddie McFadden. The inmate basically follows this girl, Brooke, and she is a nurse practitioner and she's going to go work in a maximum security prisoner. Prisoner? No, <laughs> prison. However, in this prison is this man that she used to know. Now you're just somebody that I used to know. And by used to know, I mean he was her high school sweetheart until she put him in jail. Fun reunion. We love that for Brooke. <laughs> This was so fucking good, y'all. I will say though, something that really annoyed me about this book is Brooke is so dumb. <laughs> Sweetie. Like one of those characters that you literally read about and you're like, oh no, why are you the way you are? That's how I felt with Brooke. It's like every decision she made was somehow wrong. Every single choice was stupid. And then she just kept making them and I wanted to scream. I wanted to throw the book across the room. But that didn't keep me from enjoying this book because the plot was so good and shit just kept happening. The epilogue. 
don't think I've ever been so attacked by an epilogue in my life. Like this epilogue literally kicked me in the face. Like it, it was coming after me. It was a personal attack towards Larry. That's how I felt towards the epilogue. Like the last sentence, I, I still think about it to this day. I wake up thinking about it in the middle of the night. No, I don't, that's dramatic, but it was crazy. <laughs> I rated this one 4.25. It only wasn't higher because like I said, Brooke is is not the smartest tool in the shed. Okay, anyway, if Brooke was a little bit more like the main character in this, I would be like, wow, yes, yes, this book was amazing. But because of Brooke, it wasn't my favorite. 4.25. The story was incredible though. And then Never Lie, this one follows a newlywed couple and they are basically driving down to go see their dream house that they wanna buy and then a blizzard comes down and they get stuck there for a couple of days. And the house happened to be owned by this psychiatrist and she went missing. What happened to the psychiatrist, we don't know. However, the woman stumbles into this secret room where there are tapes of the psychiatrist sessions with her patients and she starts listening to them because she's a curious gal. You know, she has nothing to do in that house. Why the fuck not? I feel you girl queen. Anyway, she starts listening to them and seeing what happens to the psychiatrist and uncovering some secrets. So fucking good, so fucking good. This one, I was so sure. I was so sure I knew what was gonna happen. I was like, I already know. You don't have to try me. I know what's gonna happen. You are not going to shock me. I was shocked. I'm not the genius I thought I was. I really thought I had it, but I didn't. I rated it 4.5. It was right up there with The Housemaid for me. The Housemaid's still my favorite, but I loved this one. Freedom McFadden, if you are new to thrillers, please, please fucking read this, any of them. Then I listened to this next one, Local Woman Missing. This one basically is about missing women. <laughs> <laughs> the worst part about this joke is not only is it horrible, but it's not even my first time making it. I made it once and I realized it was bad and then I made it again. You have this community um, of people that kind of all know each other like this neighborhood and one woman goes missing and then a little while later, another one goes missing with her daughter and you're like, what's going on? Why are all these women going missing in our neighborhood? And then 11 years later, the little daughter that went missing comes back. So you have a little bit of past present timeline. It goes from now and then 11 years ago. And there's a lot of characters, a lot of characters. I listened to this and all of them were different narrators, which made it really, really fun. But it's also hard to keep up because some of the POVs felt like they were unnecessary. Like I was like, why are you telling me this? It could have made it into like less people. I feel like some were just thrown in there just for, for the sake of having more characters, which I didn't need. But the story did keep me hooked the entire fucking time. Like right when I started, I was like, oh wow. Like it felt like a Criminal Minds episode. But I did end up reading this a three star. Three stars for me are books that I feel kind of indifferent towards. They're not books that I loved, but not books that I hated. And that's how I feel about this. Like I liked the entire book, but the ending really ruined it for me. Like when I got to the ending, I was so fucking annoyed. So fucking annoyed. It felt like the book was building up to something so amazing and the ending just really let me down and it felt very rushed and very unrealistic yet normal at the same time. How those two things coincide, I have no clue, but this book managed to do that. So didn't love that, but I did have a good time. So if you are looking for like a fun listen in a book that will keep you hooked the whole time, this would be a good one for you. It's just the ending that disappointed me. Then I paperback read this one, The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager. This was my first Riley Sager book. It will not be my last because I'm so fucking excited to read more. Basically you follow our main character. Like it starts off with her being in a uh, interrogation kind of situation. And they're like, hey, what happened to this man? And she's like, what are you talking about? I have no clue. And then it goes back and you kind of get to see. So it follows a then now timeline. She goes to this lake house that her family owns. She's an actress and she kind of goes there to unwind. And while she's at this lake house, she sees this woman drowning and she saves her. And then she becomes obsessed with what's going on in the house that that woman lives at. It's right across from her. She has these binoculars and she keeps spying on them. And then one day the woman decides disappears and she's convinced the husband did it. She starts investigating. Is she a detective? No, but she's like, I must, I must find out. <laughs> I felt like this book read like a movie. I saw it, I saw it the entire time. Somebody commented that it's gonna become a movie. Don't know if that's true or not, but if it is, I could definitely see this being an amazing movie because I had chills the entire time. It was one of those that I saw it play out perfectly in my mind. It felt like a scary movie. It really did. I loved that about it. And this was one of the few thrillers where I felt like I got to know the characters way more than I usually do in thrillers. Like 
with mysteries, I, I see the book just happening right away and you kind of don't fall for the characters. In this one, you really do root for them and you're like, wow, I, I know you. I know you to your core. That's how I felt with Riley Sager's writing. I do hope that his other books are like this because I enjoyed it. I rated it four stars. It did bore me a little bit towards the middle. I was like, just get to it. I felt myself reading just to finish instead of enjoying what I was reading, but I Loved it regardless. I still had an amazing time. The twist still got me. Also the beginning of it, it says, I think he did it, but I just can't prove it. Taylor Swift, no body, no crime. So immediately that's one of my favorite things ever. Obviously, any Taylor Swift mentions, I will take. So four stars for The House Across the Lake. And the last thriller I read for that video was Run on Red. I don't own this book. I read it on Kindle. It was a very quick, fast paced book. You have these two girls, they're best friends. They're on their way to a party at night and then they start noticing that someone is following them and basically you get to watch them try to outrun outlive run away from these people following them and figure out why they're following them and all of that i hated this book so much i wish i dnf'd this book but because i was filming a video i didn't dnf it so i'm rating it one star because i did finish it i powered through but i did not like it it was so frustrating i could see why someone would like this book because i felt the anxiety throughout the entire thing and if that's what you're looking for then this is definitely the book for that but i didn't care what happened to any of these characters because it was so fast paced and quick you don't really get to know any one. So that led me to not care at all about the plot and what's going to happen. I just kind of wanted it to be done. And then it felt like it was very redundant. The same shit just kept happening. And then when the twist happened, I was just so fucking mad at what it was. I was just like, this is so stupid. Run on red, run on no, <laughs> run on absolutely fucking not. It gets a one for me, but maybe you'll like it. If you're like looking for something very fast paced, and if you're looking for something that'll keep you anxious throughout the entire thing, this book might be for you. I was really excited for it, but Alas, here we are. In these thrillers I read, I always see the main characters like want to figure shit out. They'll see something happen and they're like, oh, I must get to the bottom of this. Me? I must not. I will run. I will run the opposite way. Like if I see something going on, I'm like, that is none of my business. Goodbye. <laughs> I will never star in these thrillers. I will never be the main character. I will just be the side bestie that's just there like, woo, I don't think you should be doing this. Those are all the thrillers I read. Like I said, if you want to know anything else, if you want to see my reactions to these, watch the thrillers for a week video. Then I did read the first Shatter Me novella, Destroy Me. I didn't read Fracture Me yet is the next one. See, here's my little bookmark. So I read the first Shatter Me book a little while ago. You guys saw me read it. And so now I read the Destroy Me novella and I'm in the middle of Unravel Me right now. So I'm going to talk about that in next month's wrap up because I don't know how I feel yet. But the Destroy Me novella, y'all, I don't rate novellas because novellas are not my thing. They're literally just like a hundred pages of very quick stories and I'm a character based person. So if I don't get to know the character a lot, I literally will rate everything like three stars or less. So I don't feel like that's fair since that's the point of a novella. It's for it to be quick and for you to not get to know the characters all that much. So I never rate them. I just kind of say novella. I read it. The end. So no rating for this one, but Destroy Me was so good. If I could pick one of the best novellas ever, this would be it. It was in Aaron's POV and it was almost better than Chatter Me. I don't know how that's possible. Like Chatter Me, I enjoyed a lot, but I feel like that was a lot of explanation and build up and you know, kind of giving you background. Whereas Destroy Me was so funny. How is Warner funny? How does he have the time to be funny? Like he's literally supposed to be this crazy guy and I was giggling. Like he was like, I love to take long baths. And I was like, hee hee hee. And then he was saying that he doesn't like to drink bean water. <laughs> but then he tried it and he was like, oh, this bean water tastes good. And he became obsessed with coffee. Immediately is. He watched her count for five hours. She counted for to like 4,500 something. It took her five hours and he just watched. He was like, yes amazing granted he did watch from a camera and if you think about the situation a little deeper it's kind of fucked up because he was watching from it, it's whatever don't think about it too much i was obsessed with this novella it was literally so fucking good i'm not a novella person like i said but this is the one you guys saw me read this too full tilt if you guys want to go watch me finish this book you are more than welcome to it's just me sobbing uncontrollably but if, if that's what you're into, I won't judge. Basically, this book follows Casey and Jonah, and it is dual POV. And Casey's like this crazy rock star whose life is kind of going downhill and she doesn't seem to care. And then Jonah is this guy who knows he's running out of time, and then their paths intertwine. Everything I just said is in the back of the book. Don't worry, none of that is a spoiler. I feel like even if you know the ending to this book, it's still worth reading because I knew the ending. I feel like everybody kind of knows the ending, but it's still a book that. I wanted to read. There's a second one called All In. I don't know if I'm gonna be reading that anytime soon. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm done with books that make me physically ill. Like, <laughs> I'm done with books that make me 
an emotional wreck. Like if I'm gonna be an emotional wreck, I better have a happy ending. You know what I mean? Like Boys of Tommen, yes, yes. Like I'm emotionally undone by those books but they have happy endings. So I'm like, hell yeah. I'll go through hell with you characters because I know that the finish line is gonna be great. But with books that I know that the ending is not gonna be happy, why the fuck am I putting myself through that? You know the hero died, so what's the movie for? Exactly, Taylor, you get me. Anyway, so full tilt, I gave it 4.5. It's like along the lines of 4.25, 4.5, 4, .5, 4 stars. It's right there. I don't really know exactly the rating. 4.5 was right when I finished and I got a little excited. I would probably rate it four stars if I was like talking about it now. It was very boring. Let me say that. You guys didn't see me read the beginning of it because I just finished it with you guys, but the beginning really bored me. Like, I, I, I was like, I don't, I don't care. I expect a lot more from this book from what I've heard of people loving it. I feel like this book was just leading up to what the ending was gonna be. Knowing what the ending is, the book is just a huge build up to that. There was nothing else besides that. No other plot besides getting to that. And I feel like with these type of books, that's usually the case, which is why I'm not a fan. Trigger warnings out the wazoo for this. Be prepared. And I read Coach by Devney Perry. I read this also paperback. This follows Millie and Ford, I'm pretty sure. I remember that because I, I remember I was also looking at cars at the same time and I was thinking, oh, Ford Broncos are cute. And then I remembered Ford. <laughs> Anyway, basically he is a football coach, he is a single dad, and she works for the school that he goes to coach in. And they used to know each other years ago, like 10 years ago, they were best, 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 best friends. And they had a little chance at love. However, that got cut short. And now they have a drum roll, please. Second chance, dun, 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 dun. So this is a second chance romance. This is a single dad. This is a small town. Yeah, it was really boring though. I rated it three stars um, because it was one of those books that I did enjoy a lot of moments, but overall it's forgettable to me. Like after I put this down, probably not gonna think about it again. And I will say I've been having this issue with Devney Perry lately, which makes me so, so sad because I feel like Juniper Hill and Letters to Molly are some of my favorite books of all time. I rated both of those five stars and Devney Perry quickly became one of my favorite authors. But then lately I've just been feeling like all of it is the same exact thing. Like it's always small town, this girl moves into the small town or this guy moves into the small town from like a big city and then they fall for the person that's been there all along, the baker or the fucking sheriff. And it's always just a bunch of blonde people falling in love. I don't know, I just, <laughs> it's all the same. Like there's no pizzazz anymore. It just feels like I know the exact structure it's gonna go in and it's very predictable. It's always the same thing. It's always very insta lovey. I do like that the characters are most of the time very mature. Most of the time there's not a third act breakup, which I like, but I don't know. It's just always the same thing. I'm over it. I really, really am. Coach, I feel like was my final straw. I feel like from now on, maybe I'll listen to Devney Perry books because they just have not been doing it for me lately because I felt the same way with Jasper Vale and with Granite Flats too. I just feel like if you have that many books, like Devney Perry has like 20 books or 30 books or more, how are they all the same, you know? Anyway, so yeah, coach, three stars, not for me, but I feel like a lot of people loved this. I feel like this opinion is really, really, really unpopular. Most people are loving Jasper Veil, vale, Garnet Flats, are loving coach. I am just not one of those people. So do with this information what you will, maybe try it out and see if it's for you. I'm pretty sure it's on Kindle Unlimited, so you can always try it. I'd be wrong though, it might not be, whatever. Then I read The Love Wager by Lynn Painter. I listened to this one. Um, this is when I started to notice that I was a little bit in a romance slump. I explained this to you guys before, but Addicted Calloway, Boys of Tommen, and Magnolia Parks. Those romance books have been so superior to me. Every single book has been five stars and I feel like nothing has lived up to it. So I needed to take a break from romance. And this is when I started noticing it. So I started listening to some romance instead. So that's what I did with The Love Wager. It follows Hallie and Jack and basically they meet at this wedding that she's bartending and he's the best man. And then they have a one night stand. And after that, they're both like on dating apps, trying to find the one. And then they see each other and they start to just kind of chat and they become really close friends. And they kind of set a love wager. Let's see which one of us can find the one first and do a little bet. And after each date, they go to this like taco stand, I'm pretty sure, and like discuss what happened. They always go to the same place to have their dates. It was so fucking cute. Lynn Painter has not let me down yet, y'all. I honestly am obsessed with her books. Better Than The Movies is still my number one, but I loved this one. Like after Better Than The Movies, I feel like this would be second and then Mr. Wrong Number. This is also set in the same universe as Mr. Wrong Number, but I'm not gonna lie to you, I didn't even notice. I did not even fucking notice. I only noticed when I went to go put my Goodreads review and it said Mr. Wrong Number Two. 
And I was like, what? Where were the characters from Mr. Wrong Number? I could not fucking tell you. I have no clue. It really was the wrong number because I did not answer. I missed the call. This one was so much better than Mr. Wrong Number in my opinion though. Um, it's like a rom-com. It's cute. It's funny. It's fluffy. It has a little bit of spice. I loved the characters. I was cheering for them the entire fucking time. None of this book annoyed me, honestly. And the audiobook was just really, really good. The narrators were good. It was fun. I had a blast. I feel like this is exactly what I needed. And Lynn Painter delivered. She just knew. She just knew what she needed to give. 4.25, Lynn Painter. I love you so much. Then I listened to this one as well, Ruby Spencer's Whiskey Ear um, by Rochelle Billow. This is either this author's first book or it's the first book I read by her. Basically this woman, Ruby Spencer, goes to Scotland to kind of write a cookbook. Like she's like done with her life. She's like, I literally need something new. I'm done with all of this. Peace out. Hi, Scotland. And then she goes there and moves into like this little cottage and starts writing a cookbook. So the aesthetic of this, are you fucking kidding me? And obviously she finds romance in Scotland with this rugged, um, handsome, grumpy Scottish man. And I saw this book, I first of all thought the cover looks so cute. And second of all, I thought Jamie Fraser, Outlander. I immediately need to read this. <laughs> and this was cute. This really was just a fluffy, fun, aesthetically pleasing romance. It didn't do anything for me in the sense of it didn't leave me wowed and it didn't leave me like with any feeling whatsoever. Once I finished it, I was like, okay, the end. And I just moved on. So three stars. The aesthetic was my favorite part of all of this. Um, I didn't feel like the romance really did it for me. I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't even remember the guy's name. I didn't feel like the romance really did it. I kind of was just focused on Ruby Spencer. I feel like this could have been like a woman's fiction book and it could have just been her finding herself in Scotland and I would have been perfectly fine with that that's how little the romance mattered but it was fun the aesthetic of the place was amazing because obviously she's like writing this cookbook in the middle of nowhere she's in a cottage like she meets all of these small town people it was really great in that sense other than that did nothing for me so three stars next up on larissa's romance lessons of the month yours truly abby jimenez um <laughs> This book follows Brianna and Jacob in its dual POV. Search of trigger warnings for this one, by the way, it has some heavy topics. It's not a heavy book, but it has deeper topics in it. So this book is set in a hospital. You have Dr. Brianna and Dr. Jacob, and he is new to this hospital. He just transfers in and she's been there for a while and they don't get off on the right foot. Let's just say immediately Brianna's like, I don't fucking like you guy. But then he writes her a letter and that's when they start to get and get to know each other. This book was really fucking cute, really fucking cute. Abby Jimenez, this is my second book by her. The first one is Part of Your World and it's set in the same universe, by the way. Part of Your World has characters that show up in here. Um, it's like interconnected standalones. I think I liked this better than Part of Your World. Part of Your World was cuter in my opinion, but this one had so much more depth, which I enjoyed. Jacob was amazing. There was anxiety rep with Jacob and I never felt more seen in my entire fucking life. As I was reading everything that he was saying, I was like, yes, 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 yes. Like every single one of his quotes, everything that he felt, I felt. So this book, was Jacob for me. Like that's all I was focused on. Brianna was just kind of there. So now that I said all the things I liked, let me talk about some of the things that I did not like. This was just all miscommunication, all of it. The entire fucking thing. I felt like for 99% of this book, they were miscommunicating. And I didn't like that at all because I felt like it really didn't need to happen in the story. It wasn't necessary. And it was just thrown in there for drama purposes, which I don't enjoy. And then there was another trope that was so, for what? You did that for what? Other than those two things, I really, really enjoyed this book. It was only the miscommunication that I didn't vibe with. And then one other trope that I don't want to tell you because I don't want to spoil anything. But other than that, this book was so fucking good. Like I said, so deep. And the author's note in the end fucking wrecked me to another universe. As if the book wasn't already amazing enough, the author's note made it that much better about what was written in here and what the book represented. I rated this 4.25. I love Abby Jimenez. I'm so happy with her writing, so happy with her characters. I really need to read more by her. Let me know which Abby Jimenez book is your favorite and maybe I'll go read it. Then I have King of Pride by Anna Huang, y'all. I don't have the paperback to this because I read it on Kindle. Wait, let me get my Kindle out so that you can see me holding something. King of Pride, Anna Huang. This is also dual POV. You follow Kai and Isabella. Isabella basically works at this club that Kai is a part of. She's a bartender there and he's a member. It's like this high society membership only club, bar, place, whatever. Kai's a member, she's a bartender. It's basically an opposites attract, billionaire romance, 
um, shy guy and like outgoing girl. It's not very tropey, like it doesn't have too many tropes. I rated this 3.5 and I know that that's going to be an extreme shocker. I know you're literally falling out of your chair and you're like, whoa, Larissa rated an Anna Wong book 3.5 stars? Yes, <laughs> let me explain myself. You know I love the Twisted series so fucking much. And so when the Kings of Sin series was announced, I was very excited. I read King of Wrath and I liked it when I first read it. And then the more that I thought about it, I didn't love it as much. And I rated that one 3.5 stars as well. Like when I first read it, I think I rated it four. And then a while after that, I changed it to 3.5. And this one, I'm just rating it 3.5 right off the bat. They're both the same to me. Like King of Wrath, I had a good time, but Dante gave nothing right? Like that book was run by Vivian. And then this one, I felt like both of them gave nothing. I just felt like the characters were very just boring, predictable. It's been done before. I couldn't even fucking tell you what the plot is. Like it's just opposite track and forbidden because she's the bartender at his club. But it's not even what she wants to do with her life. Like she wants to be a writer. So how is this forbidden? It's not really forbidden. It's just like frowned upon. Like just, just quit. <laughs> It's not what you want to do with the rest of your life. You know what I mean? So I don't know. It really didn't give what I wanted it to give. To be honest, the spicy scenes were immaculate. Loved those. Anna Huang always knows how to write them. But I feel like it's along the same lines as Devony Perry for me, where it's all becoming the same thing. Like the Twisted series already gave me what I wanted with the billionaire and morally gray characters. And so I think this one, going for that same thing right after a four series book, now you want to do seven books of the same exact thing. I just am not obsessed because of that. It's just kind of boring me. The characters are just becoming very predictable and it's just all the same. Like you could literally give me a quote from any of these books and I won't know which guy said it because they're all the same, which is why I'm such a Josh Chen stan because he's the only one that's different. <laughs> <laughs> like Josh and Jules were the only ones that gave something else. Everybody else is just the same. <laughs> and that's the thing with the guys though. Like all the guys are the same. They're all billionaires. They're all morally gray. They would all kill for you. And although I love that, I want to see something different. 3.5. Then I listened to this next one as well, guys. Um, but as you, as you know, I can't find it. The neighbor favor. Where is it? Where's the neighbor favor? I literally like, I have this paperback. Where is it? The Neighbor Favor follows Lily and Nick and it is dual POV. And basically um, the first part of this book is all emails. It's Lily corresponding with this author that she is obsessed with his books and they are chatting back and forth. And then that ends abruptly. And then part two is Lily living her life in New York, I'm pretty sure. And then she meets her new neighbor, Nick. And Nick happens to be the writer that she used to correspond with. And Lily needs a date to her sister's wedding and she thinks that the perfect person Person to go with her is Nick, her very new and attractive neighbor. Little does she know that she already knows him. It has a little bit of pen pal, a little bit of secret identity, force proximity, neighbors. I really, really enjoyed this. It was very cute. It was fluffy and fun. And I liked the fact that like he was the writer and she was a bookworm. I really liked that. I feel like usually it's like the girl will be the writer and the guy will fall for her. This was very different. It completely switched it up, which I liked. I rated it 3.75. Secret identity is not my favorite trope. So that's part of the reason. And then another, it's just, I wasn't that invested. I was just kind of like letting the book go until, until it was over. And then when it was, I was like, that was a great time. Moving on. So 3.75, I really did like it though. I think this might be this author's debut novel too. So if that's the case, amazing stuff. I may be wrong though. Don't quote me on that. Whereas my mom likes to say, don't write it down. Anyway, 3.75 for The Neighbor Favorite. It was a very fun listen. The last romance I listened to this month is Rock Bottom Girl by Lucy Score. This is also dual POV, a slow burn. It's a little bit on the thicker side as every Lucy Score book is. This book follows Marley and Jake and Marley moves back into her small town that she used to live at years ago. And she is broke. She just got downsized by her job, I'm pretty sure. She also just got broken up with. So she is really hitting rock bottom and she moves back to her parents' house and starts teaching at this school. Not only teaching, but also coaching. And Jake is also a coach at that school. He coaches track and Millie and him are rumored to date and they kind of go along with this facade for a reason that you will find out if you read this book. So it has fake dating. Um, it has like bad boy, good girl because he used to be a bad boy in high school, but then he's like turned good now. It's very funny and typical Lucy score fashion. She's a very hilarious gal. These rom-coms really hit. Um, rom-com, slow burn, small town, all of that shebang. Um, however, I didn't really like it. <laughs> I didn't hate it either. I rated it three stars. I just feel like after reading things we never got over, I've been expecting all of 
like Lucy Scar's other books to hit that hard and they haven't quite yet. Um, By a Thread came close but not really and then you guys know I didn't like Things We Had From Light at all and this one <laughs> It was just kind of in the middle. I didn't love how immature these characters were. Now I know this is very hypocritical of me to say because in Things We Never Got Over, the characters are really immature and they're like in their 40s. It's the same thing here. She's 38. It, it's the same idea of very immature adults. <laughs> but in Things We Never Got Over, I found it funny and endearing. Here, I found it annoying. So I guess there's a line. I don't know. It's just that she became a high school soccer coach and I felt like some of the things she did was very high school. Like it felt like she was stuck in high school and so was he and nobody would move on from what they used to be. I don't like that plot and I think that that's what this book had a lot of. Again, I'm in a romance slump a little so take everything I'm saying with a grain of salt. I love Lucy Score. I love her writing. She's so fucking funny. It's one of those authors that I can just keep reading because she's so hilarious but this one just did not do it for me. And the last and final book I read this month was Happy Place by Emily Henry. I did something really funny with this one. I listened to it and paperback read it. For what? I wanted to listen to Julia Whelan because I love that narrator. So I was listening when I was like driving to the gym or running errands and then I was paperback reading when I was just home. Make it make sense. Like me, how can I spend more money? This book follows Harriet and Wynne but it's only from Harriet's POV. Harriet and Wynne met a long time ago in college through mutual friends and then they started becoming closer and falling for each other and eventually they got engaged and they were about to have this happily ever after until Wynne broke up with Harriet. And now I think it's five months later and Harriet's going on vacation with the friends that mutually introduced her and Wynne and Wynne also happens to be there. Oh, did I mention that they didn't tell their friends that they broke up? So now they have to fake date the entire trip. Trip is only one week. I'm being dramatic. So this has a then and now timeline. You go from when they met and started to get to know each other. You see all of that. And then you go to the now of them fake dating so their friends don't find out they broke up. Them kind of relearning each other five months later. A little bit of a second chance. Also a little bit of friends to lovers. I had a little bit of everything. The first time I think Emily Henry has shown a friend group, like different characters. I feel like a lot of the times it's just focused on the couple. This had a little bit of everyone, which I did enjoy. Um, I rated this four stars. I think a lot of people are, <laughs> are like half half with this book. Like some people are obsessed with it. They would die for this book. And then some people absolutely hate it and want to burn it to the ground. I happen to be right in the middle. I don't know how or why, but I'm in the middle. I had a good time and I really enjoyed it, but was it an Emily Henry book to me? No. Like, did it go beach read level? No. Book lovers level? No. Like, I feel like beach read and book lovers are very character driven books and they are so different and the writing is so unique and amazing that you know that's an Emily Henry book. This fell along the lines of people we meet on vacation to me. It reminded me a lot of that kind of book. I don't know. I didn't buy the friend group as being extremely close because how are you that obsessed with your friend group? They're your people, they're your found family, but then you can't tell them that you and your and literally fiance broke up five months ago and now you have to fake date for them. I feel like that was necessary. Like the story could have been the same without that. And when was a cutie, I really liked him. Was he my favorite book boyfriend? No but Harriet also wasn't my favorite book girlfriend, so there's that as well. This just didn't read like an Emily Henry book to me. I feel like that's the only way I can explain it. It read like any other contemporary romance, but I did have a good time. I did have a really good time reading it, which is why I rated it four stars. Um, I feel like it was just a fun book. It had sad moments and depressing moments. They didn't hit me all that hard. Like I didn't cry or anything like that. I was just like, oh, that's sad. I didn't sob. I've seen a lot of people say that if you don't like this book, you just don't get it. I don't agree with that at all. I don't think that's a valid explanation. I just think that some people like it and some people don't and that's fine. I think that's a really weird thing to say. Like if you don't like this book, you don't get it. Don't get what? But yeah, like I said, I liked Happy Place. I just didn't love Happy Place. Also, this is a spoiler. So if you haven't finished Happy Place, do not listen to this part. If you haven't read it, skip this, skip this. Last warning, last warning. Harriet, darling, darling gal pal. Harriet is on her second year of residency to be a neurosurgeon. And then Harriet says, at the end of the book, I'm gonna quit that to do pottery. Harriet, what? To do pottery. And get this, she's not even good at pottery. She's not good at it. She literally said throughout the whole book that she's not good at it. Everybody says she's not good at it. Although I love that, I love that so much. Like I was a woman in STEM, I was on my way to be a doctor, and then instead here we are, I'm on YouTube. So I get 
you know, wanting to switch career paths, wanting to um, do something that makes you happy. But it's not even like we got any background of her not being happy in this profession throughout the book. If that had been the case, I would have been like, hell yeah, you go Harriet. You do your thing. You do what makes you happy. We didn't get any of that. Like she literally just talked about her being a doctor and how she enjoyed it. Like there was no moment that she was like, oh, I hate this. It made no sense to me at the end of her to just be like, oh, I'm going to do pottery. And then she's like, oh, I'll pay off my, my student loans with my pottery money. What pottery money? I don't know. There were a lot of plot holes in my opinion. It kind of felt like she gave up everything to be with him. And I didn't like that. And then again, this goes into the spoiler thing as well. Saint by Sierra Simone was the most perfect representation of someone falling into depression and pushing the person they love away, but then them coming back and fixing everything together and going through the motions together. Whereas this, I don't think it explored that as much as it should have. Like it's such a deep, important topic and I feel like it wasn't done in the best way, in my opinion. And the side characters really fucking annoyed me. Like, how are you gonna say Sabrina and Cleo are best friends and yet they were having drama the entire fucking book and like petty drama too. A lot of this book annoyed me. I see why people don't like it. I definitely, definitely see it, but I also see why people love it because it does give a lot of people we meet on vacation vibes. So I feel like if you love those that book, you might love this one too. I'm just more in the middle, four stars. A lot annoyed me and a lot I like. I feel like this is the most honest review I could have possibly given. And that is all my besties. I love you so, so much. I hope you have such a great day, such a great night, whenever it is you're watching this. Um, let me finish my Red Bull, hold on. Nice. I love you, I love you, I love you. <laughs>